I am honored today to uh, bring again to this uh, Thursday stream Jonathan Khan, who is no stranger to pretty much almost all of you that are watching this channel. If you watched my first interview with him and ever since then, he has a new book that he has released that I believe is going to be powerful today. Um, in his book, he really answers a question, could a 3,000-year-old calendar of appointed days provide a secret to the most dramatic year of our lives? Even ordaining a plague and a national lockdown, days of fire and changing of the Supreme Court. What does the future hold? Is America heading for calamity? Is there hope? Have we been given a last chance? Is it possible to change the history? Is there a blueprint that tells us what we need to do to survive and stand in the face of what is yet to come? Jonathan Kahn has been named among the, with the Billy Graham as one of the top spiritual leaders of the last 40 years to have radically impacted our world. He's written, all of his books have been New York bestseller. Not only he's a prolific writer, he also leads a gathering in Beth Israel at Jerusalem Center in Wayne, New Jersey and Hope of the World Ministry and Outreach of God's Word and Compassion to the World's Most Needed. J Jonathan, thank you for being with me today. I am so glad to have this conversation with you again. Well, it's a real blessing to be back. It, it was great to meet you the last time and the Lord anointed it and it's an honor to be back with you. Ever since the release of last book, you know, the Lord has given you a new message. In fact, it started with a prophet that met you and gave you a message that this revelation, this book that you're about to publish is going to rock the world. It's going to be really powerful. Can you speak a little bit into that meeting with that unnamed prophet? Well, uh, um, I'm thinking which one because I've had a number of, a number of unnamed prophets. Um, it's interesting, I'll tell you, but that the the day that I finished the return of the gods, the mm -hmm. day that I finished it, that's when the Lord said, this is the next book. You have to give an answer. And and actually that was linked to something, you know, there was a the, there was a man, actually one of my associate ministers at Beth Israel, um, and he's never done this before, but as I, I started working on the return of the gods, I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And he was woken up in the night and he saw a vision and he heard a word and he said, I have to talk to, I have to tell you, Jonathan, what this is. He said, he saw me speaking to all these altars of these gods. And he had no idea that I was working on the, that anything about the return of the gods. And he said, I, he said, God, the Lord said, prophesy to the altars, speak. So I did. And then as I did, the altar started breaking apart and these spirits came out of it departing. And then he saw the beginning of revival. Now he told me that not knowing anything, you know, but then what happened was that months later, mm -hmm. I finished The Return of the Gods. And the day that I finished it, that morning, after I finished it, I got news that the Supreme Court just struck down Roe versus Wade on that day. And now, now what is the altar, the altar on which we have killed so many children? So it's Roe versus Wade. And mm -hmm. so God cracked it. Here's the, you know, the vision said, bring forth the word. So it turned out on the day of the word, he cracks the altar. And this is what opens up. The Lord said, now this is the next revelation and you have to, you're going to give an answer to my people. You're mm -hmm. not only the mysteries, but the answer. And I'll just tell you, the, I'm kind of jumping, jumping the gun, but just to tell you the, the cover of the book, if you look, this is the broken the breaking altar. altar. This is the broken altar because, and that is exactly how it all began. So that is the origin mm -hmm. of the Josiah Manifest. I actually thought in the beginning when I saw the broken altar, I thought it was more like altar of God being broken in America. <laughs> but your message is very different. It's actually not the God's altar that was being broken. It was actually the enemy's altar that was being yes. broken. And you, you, right. you, in your book, you have this very shocking jubilee connection where what happened in Israel and what's been happening in the United States. Can you tell us the significance of the Jubilee and how it's yeah. linked to America? Yeah. Well, the, the Jubilee is, of course, the 50th year, and every 50th year they would have the year of restoration and redemption and reversal. If you lost your land, you got it back, year of Jubilee. If you were uh, in prison or a slave, you were set free. But there's another side to it. If you took somebody's land in the year of Jubilee, it's taken from you. So there's another side to the Jubilee that what you take, if you did something wrong, it's actually, it's restitution. There's actually a judgment in it. And I'll, I will throw in this that before going to America, I don't know if I mentioned it, but um, you know, the, the book, the Josiah Manifesto kind of takes you on a journey of prophetic mysteries. And then they all come together 
to give a blueprint or a guide or a uh, is God giving us a, a way, an answer from his word that is appointed for now? So, you know, and, and that is what the manifesto part is. And the other thing is that that it begins when I'm in Cuba. And Fid I was invited to go to Cuba because Fidel Castro was opening up the island of Cuba for one month for religious freedom. One month. And so the Christians of Cuba asked me to come and open it up with the sounding of the shofar. And so I did. And it was one month I journeyed across the island and I ministered across the island. And at the end, it ended with a big event in Revolution Square it with, and Fidel Castro showed up. And I was asked to go to, into the, uh, I was invited to go into the presidential palace where, where Fidel Castro was. And before mm -hmm. I left, a man had given me a, a prophetic word saying, you are going to be going into the king's palace. Mm -hmm. So I was ready. I went and I, I gave Fidel Castro three objects. One was a one was a Bible, which were banned in Cuba. Uh -huh. The other was a prophetic object, and the other was a prophetic word on a piece of paper. And uh -huh. what a, the, the object and the word gave him the time before, the how much he'd have left before he'd be removed from power. In fact, it came true to the, day, to the year, the month, the week, the day, and the very hour. Okay, very hour. And it was linked to the mystery of the Jubilee which is that mystery. It's not just that you get back. If you took something, it's taken away. Now, this is going to now unfold in America, as you're alluding to. Mm -hmm. This is going to affect it all of our lives. It's a, it's, it unfolded in the whole world, but America especially, um, and that is the connection to what we call COVID, or mm -hmm. this plague that came on America. Mm -hmm. And I can go into it if you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, please, 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 yeah. Uh, please go into it. So it started with the Fidel Castro. You give this, you give this word, yeah. and it's exactly, it comes true. 100%, yeah. but now you're taking it, and in your book, you're taking it deeper, how not only yes. it affected Fidel Castro, but now how it affected America, and actually how it came to pass in America already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there's one of the one of the laws in the Bible is what, what a nation does to its children is going to come back to it, you know. Wow. And Jeremiah prophesied over the Valley of Hinnom where the, the Israelites were lifting up their children. And he said, because of what you did, you took life, life is going to be taken from you. And so that's a law. So put those two things together, and it's going to uncover an, like a stunning mystery. And that is this. America began taking the lives of its children, shedding mm -hmm. the blood of its children in 1970. Uh -huh. That is when abortion on demand entered the land. Uh -huh. Roe versus Wade was 1973, but this was when it began. And so if what happens if you go to the jubilee of that? 50 years later, what happens? 50 mm -hmm. years, years later, you have it goes to 2020. 2020 was the jubilee year of abortion. And Jeremiah wow. says one of the ways it's going to come back to you is something in Hebrew called Dever Gadol, which means a great plague is going to come upon you or a massive pandemic is going to come on you. And so with the year 2020, the Dever Gadol comes on America and, and the world, but particularly America. And the thing is, Vlad, the actual day, there was a day mm -hmm. that abortion actually entered the land. And it was when the bill of abortion legalized came up in the New York legislature. It was the first one mm -hmm. comes up on January 20th, 1970. Go 50 wow. years later, and it takes you to January 20th, 2020. Anything happen? The actual day, official day that this plague came on American soil was January 20th, 2020. It was 50 years to the exact day that we began turning to the killing of our children. And the other thing, Vlad, it goes even further, is that you know remember we all remember when our when our lives were changed. It was mm -hmm. in March. That's when the full force came. Mm -hmm. And there was one day in March when President Trump went on the air and he said, "We are you are America is now quarantined." Mm -hmm. There was well, lockdowns began. The mm -hmm. stock market crashed. It was pandemic. They called it the day that changed everything. Okay, that's in March. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go back 1970, there was a day that we actually began killing children. It was legalized on that day. It in was March. March 11th, 1970. Wow. Go 50 years later, and it takes you to March 11, 2020. That is the day that it all fell on America. Wow. That is the day that it changed every. The day that changed everything. So I mean, it's stunning and it's exact, and that's just giving a taste of it. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's it's stunningly precise. You're, and exactly. you're going way deeper in your book, explaining more, connecting those dates. And, and you're actually saying that New York is like the Valley of Hinnom. Can you speak a little bit more into that? 
Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, when Jeremiah prophesied, he prophesied over the Valley of Hinnom. That's uh -huh. the place where they're literally sacrificing their children to Moloch and Baal. Mm -hmm. And so what he says is the, the, the calamity is going to come back to this valley. Where you shed the children's blood, that's where it's going to come. Wow. And so is there a, does America have a Valley of Hinnom? It does, and that is New York. Because New York was not only the place where it spread to the, the continent, but New York is the a capital mm -hmm. of abortion in America. More children have been, their blood has been shed on New York soil than any other place. So look what happens when this plague comes to America, when America becomes the center of the, of the capital of this pandemic, at the same moment, it all focuses on a little tiny sliver of land called New York. In fact, at that time, Vlad, one out of every two cases was New York. One out of every two in America true, was yeah. New York. And the thing is, in New York, passed a dark milestone, and the milestone was on April 10th. And there were more cases in New York than any other nation in the world, including wow. China, in New York. Wow. And Okay, that's April 10th. Go back 50 years, anything happened. April 10th, 1970, is the date that New York legalized abortion in New York, and it 50 years again to the exact date. Wow, that is crazy. But you also highlight the fact that New York is not the only gate that opened this. You, in your book, you, you allude to the mystery right. of the gates. And that, I live in Washington state, so I, I wanna learn a little bit more about <laughs> the other I, gate. And I'm, and I'm right outside New York. I was born in New York, so uh -huh. we are on the two gates. Yeah, there are two gates here, the east and the west. So yeah, so the other part is the mystery of the gate. You know, the Bible speaks about judgment coming to the gate, it uh -huh. talks about. And so not only did COVID, not only did abortion come to New York in 1970, but it came through New York and actually, most abortions from 1970 to 1973 were performed in New York and mm -hmm. spread to the nation. Mm -hmm. So it spread to the nation. Now, the other gate where abortion came to the continent was Washington State. That was the Western Gate. And so 50 years later, are we going to see a mystery? 50 years later, now the death, this death comes to, to America, and it enters through two gates, New York and Washington State. Patient zero was Washington that's State. That's right, that's right. It and was actually in Washington State, the first that's patient. Right. And not only that, Vlad, the day that patient zero was identified was 50 years exactly to the day that abortion began in New York and the legislature. So it was not only the place, it's the time. And here's the thing, Vlad, they just discovered, scientists looked at the, the virus and they found the genetic code of the virus says that if you had COVID, it came either, it had the markers, the virus mm -hmm. had the markers mm -hmm. of the Eastern Gate and the Western Gate where we killed our children 50 years before. The virus actually had the markers of it. So it actually has the markers of either Eastern Gate or the Western Gate? That's it, yes, that's it. Most of anybody who got COVID, uh -huh. it came, not, like 95% came from those two gates. Yeah, it had the markers of that's where we killed our crazy. children. That's crazy, it's almost like, the Bible says God is a just God, God is a just God, and He yeah. will punish. You know, not only there's eternal punishment, but there's also punishment for shedding blood. And so, but then you go, you move in your book and you also provide some of the hopeful thing that has been happening in the United oh. States, and you link that specifically with uh with the crazy guy in the Bible, Jehu. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let me, yeah, let, let me tell you. Yeah, first of all, the Josiah Manifesto is leads, def, it's all leading, all these things are leading, which we'll get to, a revelation of hope about what do we do because it actually opens up a biblical answer, mm -hmm. which I believe is God saying this is the time. But be, yeah, I'm going to get to the crazy guy in a second, as you said it. But one, just one note to sum that up, what we talked about is that when Jeremiah was looking at the at the number of children killed. He said it's going to be matched by the the, the number killed, you know, in judgment. Wow. Well, in the first three years, the 70 to 73, up until Roe versus Wade, how many children were killed? 1.3 million were killed. 50 years later, you have another three-year period of a plague, three years of COVID. And how many were killed? 1.3 million. This plague struck the same exact number of the children who were killed. So, wow. I mean, that that's yeah. not a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, you can't. And and the the uh, so now so going to now the next realm because there's all these how different you, mysteries uh, in the Jonathan, Messiah, so one of them. Jonathan, is, can I just pause for a second? Yeah. How do you how do you figure this out? Like, does God just kind of enlighten you, speak to you in the dream? I mean, that's a 
that, that stuff is not a coincidence, but it's all in front of us. We see these numbers, we see these things happening, you know. And so how did you come to this revelation? You know, you know, Vlad, if I had to, you know, figure out like, you know, each book, like it all started with a harbinger. And the harbinger, I'm standing on ground zero and I saw a tree that was struck down on 9-11. And the Lord said, there's a mystery here. You have to search it out. And then it just okay. kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the way it happens, Vlad, I can't reproduce it, but the way each book happens is it it comes like the when I need like the next clue or the next the next lead, someone will say a word that will be the next thing, oh, wow. or something will appear on my computer that I did not type in, uh -huh. you know, I didn't search for, or something will come to me like in the in the paradigm. I'm lying in my bed, my wife is asleep, and all of a sudden three things come to me, and I don't know that it's. I said, could this be? And I get up and I go on the the, the you know on the the my laptop and I look at the web and it's all true. So the Lord just leads it mm -hmm. and I just follow. Basically, you know, I, I just follow and he just, it just gets bigger and bigger. Because when I read the Return of the Gods, I was like, that's like 20 years of research probably gets put into it. And then right when I finish it, <laughs> you have a new book that has more <laughs> mysteries in there. And I was like, how could this possible? But it's definitely your prophetic voice and God is showing you these things and guiding you to bring people out bring people into the light from the darkness and um and so if you can you shift that now more yeah. into uh, yeah. the jehu and the jezebel yes. and what's the pro prophetic significance of the yeah. jehu with his battle and who is the jehu and who is the jezebel in front of us yeah. <laughs> okay yeah uh we'll go right to it yeah i wrote a book a few years ago called the paradigm actually when i told you i was lying in bed and this thing came to me the paradigm and that shows that that when you look at the leaders in the world particularly america you'll see they, they're actually following, without realizing it, a prototype, the leaders of, it, of in the Bible when, when Israel was falling away from God. And, the, and you have Donald Trump, Donald, and he, I mean, have I told you how exact this was? I mean, it gives exactly how long they're on the national stage, each one of them. Um, and the thing is that, so Donald Trump, I'm not saying he knows it, but he's following the prototype of a man in the Bible called Jehu. Jehu was a wild guy. He was he was he was unpredictable. You never knew what he was going to do or say. He was kind of crazy. The Bible actually uses the word in he dry says he drove his chariot like, like an insane man. man. Uh -huh. You know, he, his race was insane. Well, Donald Trump is also, you know, he unpredictable. You never know what he's going to say. And, and he's unlikely. Jehu was unlikely. We don't know where Jehu was at with God. We don't know. But God mm. used him. And we don't know where Trump is at with God, but God used him. And the thing is that, so Jehu was anointed, he was prayed over, so Trump was prayed over, and Jehu begins a race to the throne. And in the middle of the race, he makes an alliance with the religious conservatives of Israel. So Trump makes uh -huh. an alliance with the religious conservatives of America. Jehu invites one of them to become his partner on the, in the chariot, who is a religious conservative. Trump takes one of them, Pence, as a religious conservative and to be his partner as they continue the race. Now, now Jehu cannot come to power until he defeats an opponent. The opponent, listen, is the, is the nation's former first lady. The nation's former first uh. lady. So Trump cannot come to power until he comes head to head with the nation's former first lady. Now, the former first lady of Israel, I'll say it because you, 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 you come out with it, is Jezebel. Jezebel was for Baal worship and was for the offering up of children. Wow. Hillary Clinton was is the champion of abortion in America, the offering up of children. And when they come, they come head to head. And, you know, everybody was saying that Hillary Clinton was going to win. The polls said she's going to win. But the paradigm of the Bible said, no, Jehu's going to win. And, and, and the, the modern day Hillary, the modern day, the former first lady is going to fall. And she did. And the thing is that, so now here's another thing I'll tell you, and just to give wow. you a taste of it. Uh, and by the way, I'll tell you this, but when I wrote the paradigm, much of it that I wrote came true after. So that's why it goes, it comes together in the Josiah Manifesto because uh -huh. it came true after. And I'll show you one of the things was, which is one of them was January 6th. But let, one thing about Hillary Clinton, she was on the national stage with her husband for 22 years. Bill From the time Bill Clinton was a governor to the mm -hmm. end of his presidency, 22 years. Mm -hmm. Then on her own, she was in public office for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Then she stepped out. Then she came back for two years to run for president. So she was with her husband 22 years, on her own 14 years, and then comes the downfall. Mm -hmm. Jezebel was on the national stage of Israel for 22 years with Ahab, her husband, mm -hmm. and on her own 14 years, exactly, until she comes head to me. head 
with Jehu. Get I mean, out. Yeah. The, so, oh, wow. You can't, you, you know, no, you, no, no human could put this together. You, and so now, now the thing is that there was one time in the, in the Bible, Jehu calls for people to come to the capital city. Mm -hmm. So Trump called for people to come to the capital city. And by the way, this is not political and we're not giving a judgment on it. We're just, I'm just giving mm -hmm. revelation here. And that is that. And so the people of Jehu come, go down and they circle, they surround a great capital building. So mm -hmm. the people of Jehu, the people of Trump, surround a capital building. In the in the paradigm from the Bible, the ancient case, the people of Jehu enter, they kind of storm that building while there are proceedings going on. Mm -hmm. Well, the people of Trump storm the building while there are proceedings going on. And now, now there's, there's so and, much and you're to speaking, this, but I'll you're say You're speaking one about thing. the okay. January 6th one. Yeah, January 6th, yes. And, January, and, and so, you know, here they are investigating, investigating. You want to know, re, go to the Bible. because. And the other thing is that, that at the end of that week, Vlad, the, the Capitol Police announced how many they had arrested on site yeah. for going in. And the, the number they put and made headlines was 80 people on site arrested. Well, you go to the Bible and you go to Kings and it talks about the people who went into the great Capitol building. And it says in Hebrew, Shmonim Ish, which in Hebrew means there were 80 people who went in. The exact same number. And, and, and this is, <laughs> there's so much to this. But oh the thing goodness. is, the thing is that the significance here is that Jehu is at a war against the temple of Baal, mm -hmm. and and that one of the sections of the of the, the manifest the Josiah manifesto is Jehu and the temple of Baal. Mm -hmm. The temple of Baal represents the killing of children, yeah. and Jehu was against it. So the thing is, and Jehu is actually going to pull down the temple of Baal. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that it's saying here is that Trump, no matter what one thinks of Trump, mm -hmm. he's going to be instrumental in the pulling down of America's Temple of Baal, which is Roe versus Wade, mm -hmm. on which we killed 60 million children. Mm -hmm. And he was. Yeah. In fact, if you remember, you know, he put into the Supreme Court three people. And the second one was Kavanaugh, and all hell broke loose on Capitol Hill because it was the issue of abortion. They tried to destroy him because of the issue of abortion. Mm -hmm. Well, at the moment they're having all those hearings, and it's the war, war it's spiritual war, as mm -hmm. well as political. Mm -hmm. On the Capitol Mall, an object appears that's facing the Capitol building. And the object is the Arch of Baal. From the Temple of Baal, they erected it on Capitol Hill. And yeah. so, which is all about the killing of children. So mm -hmm. you have a real a war going on between this and still going on. Uh, spiritually, and this even goes with the return of the gods, because mm -hmm. Baal is one of those gods, mm -hmm. and so is Molech. Mm -hmm. So we're we're in the middle of the, this is a warfare we've been watching without realizing it. What about the when the Roe versus Wade was overturned, uh, the Dobbs versus Jackson? How was yes. that also part of the mystery? Yeah, well, the Jubilee is not only the Jubilee is not only the um, it's not only a time of restitution, of course, it's a time of restoration and redemption. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. at the same time, th those same three years, the jubilee of abortion and Roe versus Wade, something else was going on at the same time throughout that we, that we weren't aware of. Mm -hmm. It was happening. It was part of God's redemption. And the thing is, first of all, Roe versus Wade did not begin in 73. That's when it was ruled. Mm -hmm. It began in 1970, the same year as abortion. And so when, the, when this plague came on America... It was, it was the jubilee of Roe versus Wade as well when we got all this death come back. Well, something happened. Roe versus Wade was a case in the state, and then they sent it to the Supreme Court. That happened in 20, it happened in 1970 in the summer. Well, go to the jubilee of that, mm -hmm. and that takes you to the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. In the summer of 2020, there's another case, which is going to be the jubilee case. It's going to be the jubilee case. It's going to be there. It's going to be overturning Roe versus Wade, and it's going to follow the exact pattern of Roe versus Wade. And so, when Roe versus Wade was sent in the summer of, of 1970, so on the anniversary of that, this the Jubilean case is sent to the Supreme Court in the summer of 2020. Roe mm -hmm. versus Wade was ex, was taken up by the Supreme Court, chosen in, on in May of 71. So mm -hmm. that puts the Jubilee at May of 2021. Mm -hmm. May of 2021, the Jubilee in case that's going to overturn it, that's taken up by the Supreme Court on the Jubilee of Roe versus Wade. Then Roe versus Wade was heard before the Supreme Court. It got its hearing in December of 71. Go to the Jubilee. It's the December of 2021. That is the exact time when the Jubilee in case that's going to overturn it 
is taken up and it gets its hearing at the Supreme Court on the anniversaries uh -huh. of, of Roe versus Wade. I mean, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. In fact, Vlad, remember before this case came out, uh -huh. uh, when, when Roe was overturned, there was, it was a leak. There was a leak and it, it all came out before. Yeah, well, yeah. go back 50 years and before Roe versus Wade came out, there was a leak in Roe versus Wade. So it's it's even that was part of it. And I'll, I'll tell you, there there is a there are dates how specific God is. Mm -hmm. There's a date in the Bible, in the book of Esther, there is an evil decree that is mm -hmm. issued by Haman. And it's mm -hmm. it's it's a decree of death and destruction. Yeah. You know, and so he is, and it's linked to the Hebrew date, Adar 13, which is the 13th day of the 12th month. Mm -hmm. The 13th day of the 12th month is the day of a decree of death and destruction. Mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade was heard before the Supreme Court on January, I'm sorry, on December 13th, the 13th day of the 12th month, the day of the evil decree of death and destruction. So that's when it that's when it got its hearing. But in the book of Esther, there's another decree. Mm -hmm. Esther and Mordecai issue a second decree to overturn, to nullify Haman's decree. So it's gonna. So it it's issued, and this is the decree that's gonna uh, undo mm -hmm. the decree of death and destruction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when was it issued? The Bible says it came. It went forth on Sivan twenty three. Sivan mm -hmm. twenty three. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the case that would overturn Roe versus Wade went forth to the Supreme Court on June fifteenth, twenty twenty. But on the Bible's calendar. It was Sivan 23, the day of the decree that will overturn the evil decree of death and destruction no on the way. exact day. In fact, in fact, Vlad, no you know, way. the Jewish people on that day, uh -huh. Sivan 23, every year, they pray for God to overturn all evil decrees. Wow. And so uh, they're praying and they're praying on that day while the decree is going forth to overturn Roe versus Wade. And it was a huge celebration for the Jewish people when when that decree was overturned and also a lot of Christians were celebrating you know on that day when when it was overturned uh, here in the United States that that's incredible but you also you go even further to show how um, Amy Barrett played also she was part of that mis part of that mystery that's right you know in in the book there's a section called the child of the Nile and it's this there's a mystery that goes back to Egypt and that is Egypt is the first power recorded by the Bible and probably in history that ever had a war on children, on, on babies. And they, they decree that the, of course, the Hebrew babies mm -hmm. or the males are thrown into the Nile. Well, they do that, but one baby is put in the Nile and he's different. It's Mo Moses or Moshe. And he, he is the one who survives and he ends up becoming the prince and the deliverer who's going to break the power of Egypt that tried to kill him and the and the children. So he's going to one it's one of the children who who is going to be killed but is saved is the one who's going to overturn it. In fact, if you think about it, Vlad, look at the judgments of Egypt. What was the first one? The first one was the Nile turns blood mm -hmm. to blood. Well, that yeah. goes back to the children that they killed. And they try oh. to kill the Hebrew the Hebrew the Hebrew sons. Mm -hmm. Well, the last plague is the is the death of the Egyptian sons. So it all goes back, you know. And so now when you look at this, mm -hmm. does America have a child of the Nile? And the answer is yes. A child who was born in the slaughter, in that first slaughter, in that critical three-year period. Mm -hmm. And actually she's born right when Roe versus Wade is going to the Supreme Court. So she's wow. born right in between the two <laughs> hearings, right in the midst of it. And she's going to grow up and she's going to go to the court, the same court, and wow. she's going to become the Supreme wow. Court Justice Amy Barrett. And wow. she's the first justice who was born when it was legal to kill her as a baby. And she survives. You know, the others don't. She survives. And when she gets to the court, she is the one who's going to cast the deciding vote that's going to overturn the power that was going to kill her. And, and, and so she cast the vote. And when she cast the vote, she does it when she is in her year of jubilee from her birth she's in her jubilee in year when she comes to it and that and oh, i mean i mean and nobody could put that together either i mean look at that that god is showing his redemption in all these things and the thing is that wow. you know so the other thing is that roe versus wade was overturned there's a mystery that goes back to leviticus because leviticus tells you the jubilee it says you'll count seven times seven years mm -hmm. and the next year is the jubilee the 50th year mm -hmm. and now just this is different from sometimes the way we think it's not like a birthday when you, when you you get you turn 50 you say i'm 50 now well you just completed your 50th year your mm -hmm. 50th year began when you turned 49 
So when you count seven times seven, it tells you the parameters of this row versus wage. And so it begin the Jubilee begins January 22nd, 2022. It goes to January 22nd, 2023. That is the Jubilean parameters of Leviticus. Mm -hmm. Did anything happen? It was right in the middle of those parameters in the Jubilee of Roe versus Wade that God overturned Roe versus Wade. The Jubilee undoes the evil, undoes what was done, and God did it at the exact time. So, so the, the vote that was cast was cast by Amy Barrett, the child of the Nile, when she was in her Jubilee year, and then Roe versus Wade was overturned when it was in its Jubilee year. And only God could have could have gotten the one who the one who put who lifted her to the court was the was the Jehu who is known for, who pulls down the temple of Baal and mm -hmm. she's the child of the Nile. I mean, God only can put this together. Man, I'm getting goosebumps as you're speaking <laughs> about this. I'm like, this is this is this is incredible. This is crazy. You also um, talk about this mysterious object. I'm not sure if you already alluded to that. Yeah, yeah, that was the Arch of Baal. Uh -huh, that the was Arch, the Arch of Baal. When appeared, yeah. it appeared in New York and Washington, D.C. It, it also, yeah, it also appeared. Yeah, you know what? All right, now, I'm going to tell you. Did uh, it come from Middle You, you yeah. mentioned that it, did it come from Middle East? Here, okay, let me tell you, because that this can open up another thing that I didn't I didn't say, but because I believe it's the Lord saying. When the, the principle in the Bible is when Jehu rises, uh -huh. the Temple of Baal falls, because mm -hmm. he actually destroyed the Temple of Baal. Trump began his rise in the summer of 2015. He announced his candidacy. Yeah. In that same, there happened to be, there is, there was a temple of Baal that from ancient times that has existed for almost 2,000 years. It's in Syria, 2,000 okay. years. When Trump, the American Jehu, begins his rise in the same summer, the ancient temple of Baal falls to the earth, falls to the earth, destroyed. And it like, has like, nothing like, to do with- like and Physically, and it, and physically, it was, it was, you're talking about the physical, the one in Syria. The physical one in Syria literally falls wow. to the earth. Wow. And when 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 Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls. Wow. And the thing and the thing is that you know that was actually a foreshadow because in many ways because Trump was going to be the one again. We don't we're not talking about where he's at. That nothing doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But Trump was the one who was instrumental. If he didn't do what he did in putting in those three votes, particularly Amy Barrett as the last one. Mm -hmm. That the this uh, this modern day temple of Baal would not have fallen. So it's kind of foreshadowing mm -hmm. that he's gonna he's gonna bring down that temple of Baal. And so the so here's the thing. So he that happened. Then they recreated the arch of Baal from that temple and put it in New York, you where Trump was. Me. When Trump was running for the presidency against Hillary Clinton, uh -huh. you know, and and that's the Jezebel who's linked to Baal. The temple of Baal, the Arch of Baal, appears in New York. I actually, I actually went down to witness it. We 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 recorded it. They had a ceremony that they had. It was in it was outside City Hall. The leaders of New York pronounced all. They praised this whole thing. They played the music. They had a they had a sign that said Temple of Baal, and that was just when this Jay who was rising to become president, and then when he makes the next move with 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 the uh, you know with Kavanaugh, who's mm -hmm. going to overturn be part of overturning abortion. Then it appears in New in Washington as well. So yeah, that's the fuller story of the Arch of Baal. It's a mystery. That's incredible, crazy. You yeah. go into crazy, uh, incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's it's also really good that we were able to see this. I mean, honestly, we were all praying for the striking of this demonic altar of killing of babies. I mean, we live in a nation where we protect dolphins, we protect trees, and we don't protect children you know find bacteria on mars and we call that life and then yeah. find life in the womb and we call that something else and you so it, yeah yeah it's just this, well you know what you know this all goes all these things go together because you know we talked last time about the return of the gods mm -hmm. and when a nation turns away from god it turns back to those spirits it doesn't matter how 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 sophisticated it thinks it is yeah it's going to turn back to the act of killing children which is one of the gods you know yeah. and now we're talking yet and we talked about that last year and then yet now we're also seeing the hand of god though i mean we're Amen. we're in biblical times you Come know on. and i want to I'll, I'll tell you when there's another mystery in their design manifesto that's called the mystery of days mm -hmm. and it's this there's an ancient calendar that god put out and that, and that calendar behind the shakings of america the calendar actually Tell, ordains the shake or tells you the shakings bef before it happened and the actual time it would happen. And I'll give you a little, I'll give you an idea of it. And that is that, that the first appointed day of God in his, his calendar is Passover. Passover comes in the spring. 
What is Passover? It's the only holy day. It's the only point of day that has to do with a plague. <laughs> it, Passover means the passing sure. over the plague. Yeah, yeah. So, and it also, here's the other thing. It's also the first time in human history that we know of that there was a national lockdown. God told the people, go in your house and wow. don't come out because a plague is passing through the land. So what happens, Vlad? This comes in the spring. So at the same time when this plague comes on everybody, comes on America, mm -hmm. and we're all locked down at the at you know, March, April, that's when it comes. And by the way, it was at that time it was the whole world was locked down. Yeah. That was Passover. That's when Passover came. So you know, and so you have Jewish people celebrating Passover in their houses, talking about how they were locked down because a plague was passing in Egypt when there actually are locked down and a plague is passing in, a, in, in every land in America. And, and not only that, you know, in Israel, it was the first time in 3,000 years the government said on Passover, you got to stay in your house until morning because a plague is passing through the land. First time in 3,000 years. And to think about this, because what have we been, you know, who's the Passover lamb? Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the Passover lamb. And our faith is a Passover faith. Actually, it begins yeah. on Passover when he died for us. Mm -hmm. But so we've been watching the West turn away from the Passover lamb, mm. Jesus, turning away from the Passover salvation. So what happens? We're all brought back into Passover. Every The whole world is brought back into Passover and the plague, and we all need the lamb. You know, it's like, mm. you know, with the plague. So it's amazing, you know. So now, but that's the first one. Now, the second, the second festival of God appointed day is called Shavuot. And in Greek, it's called Pentecost. Okay. And so this is a Hebrew, the next Hebrew feast. And so what, it, what is Pentecost about? It's about, you know, I mean, I, and I know, by the way, Vlad, when I ask these questions, I know you, you're, you have the answer, but I'm saying for everybody mm -hmm. is that it's about, it's about the, the, the fire of the spirit, the, the baptism of fire, the tongues of fire. It's the mm -hmm. day of fire of the spirit. Well, when, when Pentecost comes in that year, then comes the next shaking of America. And it it's becomes, it is a baptism of fire. It is the fire, our cities go up in fire of judgment. The, what happens? Is that what the summer of rage that you were talking about? The summer of rage. You know, you know. listen, it's Pentecost that begins, wow. the it launches the summer harvest. So, uh, so here, this is how exact it was. On the very night when Jewish people are lighting the candles to celebrate Shavuot, which is Pentecost, that was May 28th, that very night, Everything goes up in flames. The fire comes. That's when the 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 police station goes up. And that's that's when it wasn't just Minneapolis. That's when the cities go up in flames. Mm -hmm. On the day of fire comes the the shaking of fire, and then the summer of fire in America. And the next one, okay, just give me. I'm just giving a taste. Yeah, yeah. The next the one is the feast of trumpets. Uh -huh. Now, the feast of trumpets to the Jewish world is called Yom Hadin. Yom Hadin means the day of judgment. And that's mm. when they say, we got to get ready. We got to get right with God. It's the time that begins the days of repentance. You mm. got to get right with God because they believe that God is, is, is in the, as the, the judge of the universe is in the court of heaven, the high court of heaven, and he is passing judgment verdict on life and death and, you know, that. So it's to get right. Well, on the day that all Jewish eyes turn to the court of God, the high court of heaven, and the judge God, that at that that moment, something happens to the High Court of America. All eyes turn to the High Court of America because it says on that day, God decides who passes from the earth. On that day, mm -hmm. on that day of the High Court of God, the High Court of America is touched and a Supreme Court justice passes from the earth on the Feast of Trumpets. And that is Judge Ginsburg. She passes from the earth on Friday of, of the Feast of Trumpets. And the thing is, think now, God is saying, listen, it was the Supreme Court that actually passed legalized abortion across mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. That was the sin. But on the Feast of Trumpets, you have to re start repenting of your sin. So, so think about that. The very act of, the, of, of Judge Ginsburg go, leaving the earth is the very act that opens the door for America to repent of Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. Without that happening, it never would have happened. And it mm -hmm. happens on the day that ushers in repentance and turn from your evil. And so on that, and, that, and that's going to actually usher in the Supreme Court is going to turn from its evil because of what happened on the day of the Feast of Trumpets. You know, uh, God is saying, listen, you have your high court, but I have a higher court. Mm -hmm. You have your verdicts, but I'm a, I have a higher judge. And I can overturn that verdict. It all begins on that day. That's and in incredible. fact, in fact, Vlad, 
that same day, they are actually praying. One of the prayers for the Feast of Trumpets is, mm -hmm. Lord, overturn the evil of the decree. And that's, literally that's it happened. The, that's one of the chants, on right? Time. One of the chants of the Feast of, of Trumpets. Yeah. One of the chants. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. Well, we, yeah. And, and so and now, and, and um, if it's okay, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share something that I witnessed, you know, myself, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and this is called, there, there, I don't know if you remember, Vlad, and I don't know if you knew. At the time, during this year, we had something in Washington, D.C. that was called the return. And the return was a day, a national day of prayer and repentance. Yeah. We, yeah. We, and now we planned it two years before this all happened, but it all came together in that year. And that, and it turned out that that we gathered in Washington on the mall mm -hmm. and we prayed and repented. We prayed about abortion. We prayed, yes, you guys were praying. We have people all, also all over America who were praying. Mm -hmm. pray well, it turned out that we didn't know it, but that day, I didn't realize it till till just about it happened. That day on the on the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish calendar, uh -huh. is called Shabbat Shuvah, which basically means the day of the return. So we have the day of the return on the day of the return without knowing it. And this is the next appointed time. That day is appointed in the Jewish calendar uh -huh. to, to for a nation to turn away from its sins wow. and to repent and have a sacred gathering. And they read Joel 2, that blow the trumpet, mm -hmm. have the gathering. That's exactly what we're doing. But on the same day, Vlad, mm -hmm. President Trump, okay, I'm sure he's not reading the Hebrew scripture. I'm, not, I'm sure he's not studying the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. President Trump decided... He was going to set in motion the overturning of Roe versus Wade on the same day, the day of turning. The turning of America would begin on the day of turning, turning. and Trump would choose wow. that day to set in motion the vote, Amy Barrett, the vote that was going to overturn Roe versus Wade because on the Feast of Trumpets, the seat was made empty. Mm. So now, eight days later, on the other holy day, mm -hmm. he he then sets in motion the very vote on the day of So we're praying, wow. you know, for that to happen on the mall. He's on the White House, mm -hmm. and he and let me just tell you how amazing God is. I mean, not that you know how amazing God is, but, but this us. is how amazing it is. Not only was it that day, at five o'clock on the National Mall, I was led. We got to sound the shofars. We got to mm -hmm. sound the trumpets. That's the that's the sign of God. That's the the sign of the jubilee. It's the sign mm -hmm. of Jericho. And so I said, we we got to seal all our prayers and then sound the trumpet. And when you hear the trumpets, everybody shout. Yeah. So it's five o'clock. We are out in the mall, <clears throat> and I say, let now we're going to seal all the prayers we prayed. And I believe we're we're all the prayers of fifty years are being sealed. I said, we're going to seal those these words. I said now. Let the power of God go forth from here. I said to I said, I, I called up the men. They're all there are six men on the stage with trumpets. And, and I said, go. And they sound the shofar. And then everybody shouts. Okay. Now, at the same time, on the White House lawn is Trump, the American Jehu. Mm -hmm. At his side is Amy Barrett, the American child of the Nile. And at that moment, he opens his mouth. And that is the moment that begins the overturning of Roe versus Wade. He wow. sets in motion the vote. He opens it up. Now, when I, Vlad, when I looked at the videotape, uh -huh. the, the trumpet blasts at five o'clock, four minutes, we were late, four minutes, and the 33rd second, I said, go, and the trumpet blasts. At the White House, President Trump opens his mouth and begins the overturning of Roe versus Wade at five o'clock. Four minutes and the thirty-third second. No the way. Exact second, the exact second. The exact moment. Way. And the and the thing is, and so it so the thing is, it put it all wow. together at that moment. Here we are. It's the year of jubilee of abortion. We're blowing. We're sounding the shofar, which you do on jubilee. Which mm -hmm. and at the same moment, you have the American Jehu standing next to the American child of the Nile, and it's the day of turning. And then it's a moment of turning, wow. and it's the sound. And so Roe versus Wade was overturned, began with the sound of God's power, mm -hmm. the sound of Jericho, the, the prayers of God's people. That's how amazing our God is. And just I want to say one last thing about this, and that is, and that is that that I, you know, I said, God, Lord, you had six people. I don't know how many people you had six people up there with the trumpets. I said it would have been nice to have seven, mm -hmm. you know, like Jericho would have yeah. been nice. And then all of a sudden it hit me and he said, wait a minute, there were seven. There were the seventh trumpet. What is the name of the president? Trump. 
What does it mean in English? Trumpet. It means trumpet. Wow. At that moment that I said, go, let the trumpet wow. sound, the seven trump sounded at that moment. Wow. And then when the trump sounds, that overturns what was done in the year of Jubilee, and that was going to overturn abortion. <laughs> Okay, this is way too much. <laughs> I think I need to take a <laughs> mental break. This is yes. way too much for my brain to... Are you guys enjoying? <laughs> is this helping anybody? I see a lot of people saying, crazy, wow, I can't believe this. This is incredible. If this is helping somebody, uh, you are getting blessed by this. Drop number one, drop a fire emoji. Let's give um, our rabbi just a moment to breathe in. Man, this, <laughs> this is... And we haven't even started to talk about Josiah. Yes. Because the this whole is, is Josiah, Josiah's yeah. manifesto. So how does yeah. Josiah come into this? Jehu, the yes. American Nile, a child of a yes. Nile. But what is the prophetic significance of Josiah and how is he linked to American recent past and also yeah. to America's future? Perfect. Perfect. And that's exactly where we are. Yeah. The thing is that the, the book is called as Josiah Manifesto. The last third or the last hundred pages are the manifesto part, which is all Josiah. So let me... so so. He, all these mysteries, and we just touched on some of them, mm -hmm. are all leading to say what the mo prophetic moment we're at and what's the answer, what is God saying? Okay. And the thing is that, the, as we said, that the altar that, you know, what happened on that day is the altar broke, you know, what, you know when Roe versus Wade broke. And so the, the broken altar is a powerful, colossal, biblical sign throughout the Bible. When the altar is broken... It means God is doing, readying a change. Because mm -hmm. when the altars broke, you know, well, I'll, I'll even put it this way. You know, the broken altar, more than any person in the Bible, points to Josiah. Josiah's birth was prophesied hundreds of years before with the sign of the broken altar. And he would grow up to be the one who broke all the altars of the gods. He's the one who went down to the Valley of Hinnom, and he mm -hmm. ended those altars. Mm -hmm. He went to Bethel, ended the he, you know. He was the one. And so what this is saying, uh, and there's so much, we're doing it in a nutshell, but that we are at the Josiah moment. Mm -hmm. The broken altar is the sign of Josiah. And then we've never had an altar like, like the colossal altar of abortion broken oh. like we've mm -hmm. seen. So this is pointing, Josiah moment is when the a nation or civilization on one hand is on, on the verge of judgment. It's mm -hmm. gone away from God. It's, it, it's, it's fighting, warring against God. That was the days of Josiah when he came to power, and it is ready for judgment, and judgment is on the eve of judgment, but at the same time, God answers, he gives a last chance to that nation or that civilization mm -hmm. for revival, because the sign of the broken altar, back then, the sign of revival wasn't a, a crusade tent meeting, which is great, mm -hmm. it was the broken altar, they broke the altars of the gods, they repented, and God brought revival, mm -hmm. so the broken altar is the most biblical sign of revival. And so the la we're talking about not only now, but the last days where we are, that on one hand, you see judgment. Uh -huh. On the other hand, revival. And mm -hmm. the thing is that God is saying, here's a last chance that the only hope of America and, and the world is revival. And the thing is that God can do it. God, we can be that generation. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, you know, Josiah was the one, one man God used to bring revival, to actually hold off judgment. One man. You know, he was born in a in an age when they were offering up their children. They were they were worshiping sexual immorality. They were mm -hmm. in gender confusion. You know, mm -hmm. the same things that are now. And he, one man, turned it around because he was sold out to God. Mm -hmm. And so the Josiah manifest was: What were the secrets of Josiah? How could he do this? How could he live in such a dark time mm -hmm. and yet not only not be corrupted? He actually changed his world. How did he? What were the secrets he had? What was this, the strategy of Josiah? Mm -hmm. What was the? What were the the powers of Josiah? What were that? And I believe God. So God is pointing all this together, and that's what the last part, which we talk about hope. What What are we to do? How can we stand strong? God is never finished. It doesn't matter whether, whether there's persecution. It doesn't matter whether there's apostasy. God has called us to be the lights of this generation. God called Josiah in a dark generation. So I believe this is a word for the last days. That's mm -hmm. why the Josiah Manifesto, and I'm, and I'm not just saying, I said, you see the, the altar. Okay, that is a sign of hope here, that broken altar. But, it's, but the subtitle is, the subtitle is the ancient mystery and guide for the end times. Because mm -hmm. the, Josiah is that person. The Bible says there was nobody like him before, nobody mm -hmm. like him after. Mm -hmm. And he lit can we change the course of history? We can. Can we make it? Can we be a light to to this world? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. In fact, this should be the time of the greatest 
hour for us because mm -hmm. when the dark gets darker, like with Josiah, mm -hmm. the lights get brighter. So what? So this is when I told you, like last time we spoke, we spoke of the return of the gods. And on the day that it was finished, God said, you're going to give an answer now. You're yeah. going to give, what is the, I have a blueprint here. You know, what is the answer from the Bible? And there is an answer. And the thing is that just like Josiah was born for his age, yeah. we were born for this hour. Well, this can be our greatest moment, but we cannot be silent. Josiah was not afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't care about the majority. Mm -hmm. He was radical. You know, mm -hmm. the dark was radical. He was radical. Mm -hmm. The dark was revolutionary. He was revolutionary. It's mm -hmm. time to get revolutionary again. Time mm -hmm. to get radical again. Mm -hmm. It's time to get like the book of Acts again, mm -hmm. because the, the end of the age will be like the beginning of the age. It's going to be radical. It's going to be powerful. And the, the end times are not just darkness. It's powerful light in the midst of it. And so we were born for such a time as this. That's what this is all about. It could mm -hmm. be our greatest hour. That is why I wrote the book. Wow, that, that is an incredible, incredible conclusion to that. I think that, wow, I think every person needs to get, and you in and, and your book, you highlight more about things that Josiah did that we oh. need to be doing, imitating. Yes. Yes. How do you protect your, I mean, even how do you protect your family? What do mm -hmm. you do if the if persecution comes? What do you do if the government says you're going to turn away from God? And how do you overcome? So yes, if that's a hundred pages. We, we couldn't, you couldn't even begin to get into, yeah. but it's, it's all these sections, but absolutely. So I'm praying, you know, I'm praying that and it's not just, I don't need to, you know, push books, but I believe I do it because God says it. And I pray that people get yeah. the Josiah Manifesto, not just for themselves, but for people in their life mm -hmm. who need to know and need to be strong and become strong again mm -hmm. and become the light again, or for people and for people in their lives who are not believers. Listen, they, they don't believe in God. This is saying, whoa, God is real. God yeah. is exact. God is precise. And God's on the throne. Come on, come on. So I pray so they can get, so I'll just say this, that that the, the, the book, the Josiah Manifesto is literally everywhere. You get, it's online on Amazon. You can get on Amazon right now or anywhere. Um, it's in even Walmart has it. It's everywhere wherever there are books. But I pray, pray it also for people in your life. Yeah, buy one for somebody else as well, especially yeah. to your skeptical, skeptic, yeah. uh, you know, friend or maybe a backslider. This would be a good moment to kind of wake them up because you can't, you can't make this up. Um, no. What uh, no. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn brought to our attention, you can't make this up. This is not something that is just the way these things, he lined them up. You know, things that happened before, they usually happen again. And that's what yeah. we are seeing right now. The history is repeating itself, but we are also living at the cusp of revival. But last question, do you have anything about the fact that Josiah died prematurely and he was cut short? Uh, was yeah. there, do you see like this potentially being a revival that will be premature, premature or it's not going to be, it's not going to last? Um, or do you see that this well, is the, 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 the ball is in our court and it's going to depend on how we're going to respond? Yeah, I like, I like everything you said. Yeah. One is, yeah, he, he died in war because he went against something he didn't have to, but he did. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that, and then, and then God said, after he died, the nation turned back and then came judgment. So, so you, it's, it's the power, what one person can do, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So the thing is that, but the ultimate thing is, as you just said, it's in, it's in our court. This is the big if, if my people, and we can do it. And the thing, listen, the first thing, Vlad, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling that the Spirit is saying, the first thing is we got to pray for revival in our own lives then, and do it. And then you can Same. have revival around you. And, and then no matter what happens in the end times, you're going to have revival. That's right. The revival is not going to end if you don't. And the other thing is that Josiah, he, he, he broke the altars of the gods. And the first thing is great. If there's any altar in your life that shouldn't be there, some Same. break that altar because you're going to have revival. Same. When you break the altar, revival is going to come to you. Then we can break the altars in our world, you know, mm -hmm. and bring life. But the point is, so I think the, the, it leads to the end times. The end times, you have darkness in the culture, mm -hmm. but you have light among God's people. Yeah. So that's where ultimately, no matter what, nothing puts out our light. <laughs> the enemy cannot take away your light. You just have, if you're moving for God, so listen, we pray for, and we know there's going to be, he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And we mm -hmm. know that there are people going to be saved from every nation. So the point is, let's be part of that. <laughs> Let, mm -hmm. Let's pray for that to come. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, the altar's broken. Let's pray for the glory to come. Amen. 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 Well, sir, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know it's late in your hour and we already spent at least one hour together and <laughs> you have done the, a lot of these um, interviews because your book is is just really touching so many people and so many Thank people you. are purchasing. So I just really appreciate um, oh. the time that you have given us. And you guys, um, we have pinned the book in the comments. We also, we're going to drop it in the chat. 
as well as in the description for those of you that will be re-watching, for those of you who will be listening to this in a different language or an audio uh, version of it, make sure that you just all you got to do is go search Jonathan Kahn and then all of the books will show up and type Josiah's Manifesto and that I believe that this book will really light that fire. It will give you hope. Um, it will really give you hope to see God's activity. I feel like the return of the gods, we, I saw more of the return of the devil, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was, it was powerful but it was, yep. it was kind of like it stirred up the warrior inside of you like, man, yeah. I'm going to go, I'm yeah. going to fight back, you yeah. know. Yeah, but, we, well, we, we got to know what we're fighting and yeah. we got to know our times in order to overcome. But it ends as it as it's ending. You get to the hope. And then and then and by the way, I'll just tell you, this is kind of a secret. If you look at the epilogue, uh, the, I never have an epilogue, but that book has an epilogue because that's the day the altar was broken. So God was saying, listen, I got hope. So this is kind of the sequel mm. but from that epilogue from the broken altar of the gods. So, yeah. yeah, it's always hope. You know, we got hope. Are you uh, secretly working on another one? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I am working on another one right now. Um, uh -huh. And uh, okay, can, should, can I, I got, all right, I'm going to give a, okay, is this a, I would say this is just you, but of course everybody's listening, but here's the thing, but pray for it. This is, Vlad, this is, this is, this is another sequel to the return of the gods. It's the return of the gods too. And it's going to take a whole nother dimension here and it's going to still end with hope. <laughs> so it's a whole All other right. dimension that I could not reveal with the first book uh -huh. uh, that is going to be coming. It's going to be, uh -huh. you know, it's going to, uh -huh. so please keep me in prayer, everybody, as I, I work Do you on have any uh, prophetic mystery from the Old Testament about the upcoming election? Well, okay, I'm going to, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, you're we're pushing we're this. We were supposed to end this five minutes ago. <laughs> okay. So you I'm can gonna, just right, turn I'm off the Zoom this. and say, hey, just uh, electricity went out. If you don't want to answer that, it'll be completely fine. <laughs> the, 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 wait, the electricity went out? No, 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 I'm saying you can turn oh. off the Zoom right now and oh, we'll just no, say no, the electricity no, 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 went no. out. No, 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 no. Um, I'll say this, okay, I'm not predicting, okay, I'm not predicting, yeah. but I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say just an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And that is, from the paradigm that we talked about with Jehu, yeah. and that actually begins in the book called The Paradigm. Interesting thing because he it says he was on the national stage for 28 years. Okay, so his last year was the 20 was 28. Now Trump was not a politician, so he's been on the stage. So it's hard to say where that begins. But mm -hmm. the thing is that his last year was the 28th year of his reign. The 20. Well, interesting thing because if Trump does win, mm -hmm. okay. And by the way, we don't know. They're trying to put him in jail. So we don't know what's going to happen. He can win and be in jail. But the 28th, that means his la the end of his reign will be the year 2028. 28 is the time of Jehu. <laughs> this is the last time of Jehu. So I'm not saying it has uh -huh. to be, but I'm saying I'm giving a little scoop that isn't okay. that it's an interesting thing to know. Interesting. So concept. we got to pray. Okay. But yeah. you know what? Trump, you know, Trump is not the answer. God's the answer, but Trump can be used that we can pray, you know, make the most of every moment you have, whether it's yeah. a good ruler, a bad ruler, God's on the throne. Yeah, plus I think that the impact that God used him to break yeah. the altar of abortion. Absolutely. Is, I mean, this has been 50 years in in making. Absolutely. So I think that what, how you connected those dots with the, with the Jehu and the Nile a child of America. I mean, that's just that's just incredible. And I think that we are grateful to God for using a man like that because I think it took a man yes. who is a madman, unpredictable, kind of like kind of like <laughs> Trump. You know, you just never know what yeah. he's gonna say. And so, um, but it had to be done to defeat this demonic agenda that was happening in the United yeah. States. And now I think yeah, it's I, an I, open door for us to just run and and see revival and build God altars. Right. You know, build godly altars to God. That's, that's right. That's right. And you know, isn't it interesting, Vlad, as you're saying this, that God would raise up a man called Trump to be there in the Jubilee of a Trump I to know. sound in the Jubilee. He raised them up, you know, isn't it? Our God is amazing. I, yeah, yeah. Well, Jonathan, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If people want to find more about your ministry and also find more about other books and the church yeah. that you are pastoring, um, as well as um, any other things, can you give them a little bit of explanation yeah. where they can find you? Yeah, yeah, you can go. Yeah, if you go, the, the outreach ministry, we get the gospel of the world, we help the needy. It's called Hope of the World. Um, and all my teachings are there too. And also we, we send out free prophetic updates and free CDs of mysteries. It's hopeoftheworld.org if you want to see that, hopeoftheworld.org. I'm also on Facebook, John the Con with YouTube. We put up, I put up special things at different times. I'm not like you. I'm not an expert on this, but I put up message, prophetic messages there. 
And then if you're ever in New York or New Jersey, uh, that's the I lead the Beth Israel at the Jerusalem Center in Wayne, New Jersey. And you can find that on the web. But there's a, there is a site that the publishers put up called Books by Jonathan Kahn. I don't know if it has all the books, but if you just Google and you go Jonathan Kahn, Amazon, you'll see all my books. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. And uh, thank you for spending some thank time you, with Vlad. us. Thank you, You too. Stay strong, my friend. I will. Thank you. <laughs> well, guys. This was incredible. Drop a number one in the chat if this was life-changing for you. And I believe that a lot of you were greatly, greatly blessed. Um, so show some support. We're going to drop some links for Jonathan's books. We're going to drop some links as well for his YouTube channel, for his ministry channel. And if you are anywhere near um, this uh, rabbi's church, you want to go there this Sunday and stuff. So I would want to listen to this every single weekend and stuff. So he has incredible, if you check his YouTube channel, he has incredible things about Barbie. I actually probably should have asked oh. him about the Barbie and stuff. So next time has a lot of anything that happens culturally, just he just has these insights from the Old Testament, the new, the just that those mysteries that are just incredible. So uh, drop that in the chat. We are also sharing those links with him and uh, show some appreciation as well as go and subscribe to his YouTube channel uh, for that. Amen, amen, amen. So um, we're going to take a moment and just um, if this was a blessing to you guys, if you have enjoyed this, um, we want to ask you to take a moment also and uh, partner with our ministry. If uh, you're saying, hey, I, I love this kind of content, I enjoy this, these teachings, I enjoy also the fastings and the books that we offer. Um, we actually today reached 2 million subscriptions on Uversion Bible app. So we produce reading plans, uh, e-courses, we produce as well books, produce um, and translate them in different languages like even this pot this interview today we're going to translate as well into other languages on YouTube for Russian and for Spanish and so um, you guys guys your giving helps us to do this so I just wanted to say um, thank you for everybody that's been giving I want to say thank you that ever anybody who's ever given one time and those who have become partners we just wanted to say from the bottom of our heart thank you for those of you who are never given before and you're maybe stumbled first time you're like man this sounds like a good ministry to sow i want to tell you that it's a good soil to sow in good soil to support financially we love god's people we love to build god's people and so this will go to help us build more and more of content for other people that reaches millions every single month so um, consider becoming a partner consider becoming um giving one time and if you are in that place where you cannot afford to give hey please do not give your last penny do not give your last meal money or your rent money uh, just remember we're here to serve you we're here to be a blessing to you and so do not this is not a compulsion um, or pushing um, or nor do you have to feel like guilty or do you have to feel pressured and so it's something the bible says if we purpose in our heart you know to give god blesses that and so and if you don't have that in your heart or if you watch this ministry and you don't have the resources or honestly you don't have the desire and you're like ah yeah i'm supporting other ministries that's completely cool with me the lord is going to take care of us and i believe that he's going to take care of you as well and he's going to bless you and lead you and as long as you're obedient to the lord god's going to lead you and that's what all that matters so just want to say thank you again for those of you that are that have been given